Are you bored with pilot watches that look like all the other pilot watches? Pilot watches that look like watches that an actual pilot in World War II might have worn? Want something newer, more contemporary, more modern? Zenith has you covered with the new Zenith Pilot. I never really liked the previous lineup of Zenith watches. There were a multitude of reasons for that. The short version being I felt they were ugly. The Pilot Type 20 at 45 millimeters was a bronze monster of a watch with a huge crown that dug into my wrist, had weirdly rounded lugs, cathedral hands, and large overpowering numerals in a green hue, which to me was just too much. It was a pilot's watch. It had everything a pilot's watch should have. Size, legibility, ease of use, but pretty it wasn't. Likewise, the Pilot Chronometro with our bezel gradated brown orange dial and chrono subdials. It was just visually like watching a stereogram in my eyes. Zenith had a lot of work to do to convince me that they could make an appealing pilot's watch. As part of their consistent revamping of their lines and repositioning of the Zenith brand, the time has now come for the Zenith pilot's watches and the Pilot 2023 edition. This time, Zenith released a steel 40mm pilot's watch with a black dial, white numerals, sword hands, and a 36,000 VPH El Primero movement with 60 hours of power reserve and 100 meters of water resistance for a price of $8,440. The watch comes on a black rubber canvas textile type strap with a deploying clasp. The case itself, apart from the 40mm diameter, has a lug to lug length of 49.6mm and is 12.9mm in height. In comparison, the IW you see Pilot Mark 20 is half a millimeter shorter, two millimeters thinner, with the same diameter. Wearing experience is very different, but I'll get back to that. Before we get to the watch in detail, I think it's relevant to talk about where Zenith is in the market at the moment compared to where they have been. If you've watched my channel, you'll know I like graphs and scales and quadrants. Well, there's another one here where we take pilot's watches and place them along two axes. The one, a scale that goes from classic to future forward. The other, from conservative to provocative. First is the IWC Pilot Mark 20, the watch that most directly competes with the Zenith. There's no doubt that the IWC is positively middle of the road. Simple, elegant, easy wearing. Aorus straddles this weird ground of stealth fighter pilot's watch on the one hand with none of the signifiers of classic tool watches as part of its design. No huge crown, no high contrast dials, no triangle at 12, no big hands, and no giant numerals. On the other hand, it has this playful approach to color, which is quintessentially Aorus with salmon pink, matte gray, and of course, Kermit green. What you have with the Aorus is future forward and a reasonably provocative design approach. The Lakers and the like are conservative and classic. They look like pilot watches have looked like since their inception and break no ground in terms of risk-taking design decisions. Now, a final point of reference that isn't a pilot's watch is the Tudor Pelagos 39. It's got a slightly more modern look than the IWC. It's not taking any chances other than building a dive watch in 39 millimeters. This is the watch for the hip and cool crowd that wants something easily stylable without too many overt historical references and a go anywhere do anything palette. What has happened to Zenith over the past couple of years? Well, in short, they've converged on the space that the Tudor Pelagos 39 inhabits. Not all their watches are in this space, but their main lineup, the sellers, are all now squarely aimed at the space. To me, the Zenithify Kronos and Extremes were all here and here to prove Zenith's movement and innovation credibility, but the Zenithify Skyline Classic goes modern, accessible, stylable. This is the watch they want you to buy in droves. They have more daring designs adjacent to their key bulk sellers, but this is the space for the bulk mass appeal watches and the pilot automatic is squarely in this space. Well, it depends. Let's go through the components individually. Where IWC, Oris, and others opt for a steel bracelet on their pilot's watches, Zenith goes for this rubberized Cordura textured style strap, which to me is very much in keeping with the way I think of a true pilot's watch. In my mind, I see leather bun straps or other textiles as not only more utilitarian in aesthetic, but also more practical when you want to get this watch on or over your flight suit. Recently, we've seen AP with the code 1159 releasing watches on textured style straps. Patex has done the same with the 6007. Nomos has been releasing watches on straps for ages. And the Moon Swatch, albeit in a very different price bracket, also comes with this kind of textile rubberized strap. I've been thinking a lot about where this trend started and why. The answer was essentially in plain sight. Young people, the people that wear this watch, the Apple Watch, have grown up knowing that 
watches would come on rubber or textile straps. If your first watch was a Fitbit, a Jarman, or an Apple Watch, the transition to a real watch is going to be shaped by what that wearing experience was. And there, these rubberized textured straps are what you know and associate with the wristwatch. The case has rounded curved lugs with polished beveled edges for contrast and visual variation. The case is laterally brushed as is the bezel. No radial brushing, but rather this is end-to-end -end vertical brushing. The bezel itself is quite substantial and it lifts the otherwise reasonable thin case up off the wrist as if to draw your attention to the dial as opposed to a Pilot Mark 20 which comes across as thinner, flatter and almost all down. The crown is a larger crown as is required on Pilot's watches but it isn't huge and doesn't dig into the wrist like some Pilot's crowns tend to do. The crown doesn't sit flush against the case instead being rounded and angled on both sides to aid in it being easy to handle with minimal fuss. This watch wears more chunky than an IWC Pilot Mark 20 but it's not overpowering. Because of its height and slightly chubby feel and the bezel, it will feel bigger than quite a few comparable 40 mm watches on the wrist. You have a black dial with a horizontal pattern of hyped lines. The thing the pattern reminds me most of is those cattle grates you see on farms to keep sheep, cows, and other livestock from wandering off. The numerals are large and white, but not overpowering. The cathedral hands of the formal models have thankfully been replaced with more contemporary sword hands and a pointer seconds hands, which I think is a way more toned down look compared to the pilot's watches Zenith previously made. The date window sits at six o'clock making for a symmetrical design. Personally I don't always like the use of huge numerals on a dial but they are sort of par for the course when making a pilot's watch. This font however is without serifs and other classic design choices opting for a more ultimately plain easy on the eye font. The horizontal white bar at the six o'clock position is something that you notice. I'm not sure if it's good or bad and don't have the you know mental acuity to imagine what the dial would look like without it but it's an unusual design choice. Also the pilot logo which I think is there for trademark reasons is a little bit on the nose. Overall the watch looks good. It has no design disasters. It's well made. It has a lot of cool details without going overboard. Whether that makes it good well that depends on how you look at it. Here's the potential problem with this space. It can be boring. It's playing it safe, taking a minimal amount of risk. A Pelagos, I think, is also a good looking watch, but it's also slightly forgettable. No chances have been taken whatsoever. The Zenith, the size at 40 millimeters is not small by Black Bay 54 standards, but for a pilot's watch that still has to live up to the expectations of legibility and ease of use is positively middle of the road and very much in line with similar offerings from IWC, Leica, Longines and Oris. Zenith goes for black. Black does a number of things. One, it's usually more broadly appealing because it can work with any clothing and you can style it strap-wise in a million ways. It's easy to integrate into any wardrobe. They go for the Kodura strap. It's not only youthful, it's also active, Apple Watch forward. It also has a quick release system, again facilitating that ease of personalization. The design choices in terms of polishing and brushing, the foregoing of patina instead for clear white on black, no cathedral hands, and the overall utilitarian look are all good. But you can't escape the fact that some people will find this watch completely boring because of all these design choices. Inoffensive, bland, careful, risk averse. There are those that will look at this watch and find the inoffensiveness, the simplicity, the risk adverse design choices and find this watch to be boring in the extreme. And I can relate to some extent. It doesn't do old school and classy like an UPWC. It doesn't do risk taking like a lime green ProPilot X. To the collector also it has no quirk in its design that will endear it to seasoned collectors. Like the Pelagos 39 also is boring. To some so is this watch potentially. But for others, there's another perspective. Let's go back to an IWC Pilot Mark 20, which I absolutely love and I think is one of the best watches out there in this price range at the moment. An IWC wears thinner, flatter, and is almost all dial. This watch, although also 40 millimeters, is that tad longer in the lugs, that tad higher. And with that substantial bezel, the watch does wear more like a chunky monkey on the wrist compared to an IWC. Yeah, it's slightly more present and more chunky, but the wearing experience it reminded me of most was actually comparing the Apple Watch to an Apple Watch Ultra. The AW Ultra is just that bit more present, chunky, toolish and outdoorsy. It's not flashy, but just more present and more modern. Your dad wears the Apple Watch. MKBHD wears the Ultra. The devil's in the details and yes there are so many risk averse choices in this watch but compared to an IWC or a Stover it's just that bit more modern, more contemporary. The IWC is for the guy that comes to the office every day. The Zenith is aimed for the cool hip remote worker. This is flexibly modern to many and like the AW Ultra, it's that bit more rugged, more serious, more keeping it real in look and feel.
This watch does have many of the Fleeker cues of the likes of Stover, Leica, and WWC, but it has shed itself of any stuffiness, heritage cues, or homaginess. It's not like the BB58 that is deliberately going for that vintage look. The Zenith looks like a pilot watch, but unlike the ProPilot X, it isn't trying to be super modern or quirky. It's just a modern and modernized rugged pilot's watch, and not many other watches inhabit that same space right now in the pilot's watch segment. It's a cool watch, and I personally appreciate this not-so-classic interpretation of a pilot's watch. I think Zenith is onto something, and I think a lot of people will end up choosing this watch for those very same reasons. There's one caveat, though. It's over $8,000, which is a lot for a watch that, although with a badass El Primero-style movement, is not necessarily technically class-leading, and for the functionality, it's a bit steep. It's in line with Zenith pricing, but is it necessarily 2K better than the IWC? I doubt it. But more importantly, that's a lot of cash for a new class of watch buyer to fork up with as a first-time investment. Is the watch worth a look? Yes. I would suggest checking out the secondary market and see if some show up at a discount. Then we'd have something much more compelling. There aren't a lot of pilot watches that come across with this specific vibe. So as always, if you like, you like. This will be a watch that a lot of the cool kids choose, I think. But what about you? Where are you on the scale? Boring and bland or rugged, modern and versatile? Let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe. Cheers.